What's going on guys? I am super excited for today's video because we are installing Rytex TQ coilover system. So if you guys have been following along, we ended up installing Rytex Delrin bushings. So we replaced all the worn, dried out and rotted rubber bushings with Rytex Delrin bushing kit. So every bushing on the control arms is now upgraded. It's stronger. It's going to improve our handling. And now we are ready to replace the suspension. So you'll see here, I've got the mono leaf on the ground we took that out when we were doing the control arm bushings so i left it removed i'll tell you guys how to take yours off in just a second check this out you guys i've got everything laid out here we're going to be covering the sway bars in a separate video as well but here it is this is how it's going to arrive ride tech does have several systems of coilovers for you guys so this is ride tech's tq system so these are triple adjustable we've got low speed adjustment on our compression we've got high speed adjustment on our compression so that's this larger knob here and then also on the bottom of the shock we've got our rebound adjustment so we can tune these shocks in infinitely we have every single adjustment that we need also you notice that they are rebuildable so they're serviceable so with us being at the track and we are going to be putting this corvette through its paces um, down the road if we need to we can still service these shocks which is another added bonus as well so you can also fine tune your spring rates so you can see here the springs don't come assembled because you can actually request different spring rates depending on what application what kind of racing you're doing all that stuff and the nice thing about the remote reservoirs is we're going to be mounting the remote reservoirs inside the car in the back and then underneath the hood in the front that way we can actually get to all of our adjusters so we don't have to get underneath the car to make suspension adjustments this is going to be the ultimate setup for us at the racetrack so i haven't assembled anything here and all of our hardware is included as well so these are all of our brackets for our reservoirs so that we can remotely mount them and then we've got our spring collars all here as well so let's go ahead i'm gonna assemble all this stuff and uh, we'll get straight into it as far as the leaf removal i'm sure if you guys are tackling this you guys can probably figure out how to remove the leaves but this one's very simple so there's the bolt that goes straight through the bottom of the control arm which you can see here there's going to be a little c-clip here and then the nut and you're going to hold that remove that and then once you do that the mono leaf is going to retract that way and then you just take off these four 13 mil bolts and then take the leaf out so it's pretty straightforward there let's take off the front one so here we are in the front. We still have things somewhat apart just because we were doing the Delrin bushing upgrade because we had all the control arms off to press out the old bushings and press in the new. But in order to get out your mono leaf on the bottom, it's mounted in the same fashion. So you got the four bolts right here, but it is on top of your control arms. So in order to get that mono leaf out, you have to take out your upper control arm bolts and then again support your lower control arm and you're going to be lowering this down in order to relieve the pressure off the bottom of your mono leaf so you got these little adjustment pucks right here once you're able to get space underneath that mono leaf right there and you're going to do the same to both sides also you're going to want to disconnect your sway bar then you'll be able to get the mono leaf out and then we can start to get to the fun stuff in getting the old shocks out of here and getting the new ones in so with our upper control arm removed from the vehicle our shock disconnected our sway bar disconnected and our outer tie rod you can actually swing the whole suspension out like you see here so you really only have to do one side you can actually come out this way so then it's just a matter of those 213 head bolts and then we can take this whole mono leaf out now with all of our mono leaf bolts removed, you're gonna see here once we lower this out of the way that the mono leaf is actually ready to come out. And we can take this out and discard it. So at this point, we can go ahead and we can put our upper control arm back on the vehicle and we'll put our bolts in. All right, so next up we need to take out our shock. So you're gonna have the lower bolts off of the shock. So there's two bolts that run in here. You're gonna have those removed so that you could have taken out your mono leaf. And then on top, there's a 17 mil nut. But in order to get to the top of this, normally you're gonna have your windshield washer reservoir on this side and your coolant tank on that side. That side I already uh, managed with, but you're gonna have to move it out of the way. You're gonna see an Allen head in the top of this. Grab that because what you're gonna do is put your Allen head in here. That way you can hold the shock shaft from spinning. Take your 17 mil wrench. You're gonna throw it right down in here. Loosen this and I'll show you guys a little trick. So you're gonna crack this loose 
And then rather than just ratcheting or turning your wrench, tighten your ratchet and it'll just loosen itself. So you're holding the nut, you're tightening the shaft or where your Allen key is in. And that's it. It's as easy as running it down that way. So we're gonna take this all out of here. My shocks are about 300 years old, so it's gonna be that. There's a little bit of rust just in the top of the Allen head there. You're gonna have your steel collar, and there's gonna be rubber bushing, and then after that we can get the shock out. In order to get this out, we're gonna compress the shocks. So just compress the shock down, and then you can bring it out. You might have to finagle a little bit, but it will come right out of here like so. Okay, so with the mono leaf out and our Bilstein struts out, now we can go ahead and assemble our Ride Tech coilovers and get them in here. All right, so what I've done is assembled one of the front shocks for you guys, just to show you guys what it looks like assembled. But it's a very simple assembly process. So you're gonna look at your instructions here and you're gonna see the order of things. So you will have, depending on what springs you end up specking out, you're gonna have a different spring rate for the front and the rear. So just make sure you get that organized. And uh, what you're gonna see here is this collar. So just follow the instructions, this collar, this washer. You're also gonna have this screw that's gonna go in here. They do have this little piece of plastic here just to kind of keep things spread open as we install it. And then you're gonna have your spring in between here. This is gonna go on top of your spring. This is gonna go on top of there. And then this C-clip is what's gonna hold all of this in place. So we'll go ahead step by step, show you guys exactly how to install it. This is what the final assembly is gonna look like. There's your set screw. There's your washer, your spring, your washer again, your cup, and then your C-clip on the top. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna take this, and you're gonna obviously wanna put the portion that contacts the spring facing up. So we're gonna roll this down towards the bottom so we can get the spring on here. And we're gonna take our plastic washer, pop that on there. At this point in time, you can remove this little plastic nub that's in the collar for shipping. And we're gonna place our spring on top, another plastic washer, our cup. And then you can just take the C-clip with your hands, place it over top. We're gonna slide it down until it snaps in place and we're installed. So just for now, we'll bring our collar up. We're gonna adjust everything later, but this will at least hold everything in place. So that's the assembly there. So now that we're ready to put them in the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and take our adjustment cap off here that way we can actually pass this through so it just comes off this little torx screw right there that comes off and then we're able to get this nut off we're going to take off this aluminum cup and then we're going to take this off so this is going to sit there on the top of our frame this portion with the ball here this is going to sit on the underside of the frame so we'll go ahead we're going to pass this through the vehicle these three the nut the aluminum and the Delrin washer is gonna go on the top. Okay, so we're over here at the vehicle. Just be conscious that while you don't have this nut on the top, all of your spring assembly can slide off with everything here. So just grab it by the base. If you try to grab it by the spring, everything is gonna come sliding off of the actual shock shaft. So let's feed this in here and then uh, we'll get it into the hole there in the top of the frame. All right, so we've got our shock coming into place here, but we're just kind of holding it for now. So let's go ahead and we're gonna put that hardware on the top and that will actually hold and hang the shock. We're gonna take our Delrin coned washer, drop the flat side down on there. We're gonna take the cup on our aluminum washer, drop that down. Then we're gonna take our nut and we'll just spin it on there for now just to hold everything in place. All right, so I went ahead, we've got the hardware on the top holding it in place. And then on the bottom, installed our two bolts there with the associated nuts on the bottom. I haven't quite decided how I want to pass my remote reservoirs through and into the under hood compartment. So while I kind of mull that over and decide, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the rear coilovers as well. We'll get all that stuff situated and uh, then we can start just figuring out where we're gonna mount all of these remote reservoirs. Okay, so the rear leaf is already removed. And what we're gonna do now is remove this bottom bolt here. So this is a 24 
head bolt as well as a 24 mil nut on the back and then you're gonna see here a 13 and a 13 and we should be able to get this shock out okay so i just took out the passenger side i'll show you guys what i did and then we'll go through it step by step so what i did was take out this outer toe link here i just uh, popped it off used a ball joint splitter we'll do it on the other side um, i disconnected this just so there wasn't you know any strain on the electrical connection parking brake cable is under a bit of tension but nothing crazy and then like i said swung this out of the way that way i could get the shock in and out through here because uh, otherwise i was trying to compress it and then once we do the coil over it's gonna be a little bit harder to do that as well so anyways that's out let's go ahead and get to the same point on the other side and i'll show you guys how okay so we're gonna take our 24 mil nut off the bottom of our shock right there and then there's no particular order but we're gonna take out the two 13s on the top okay there's that one next up we'll take an 18 on our ball joint here take your ball joint press I don't always like using these because they kind of destroy the boot but I gotta replace these anyways here shortly so not too worried about it and then we'll go ahead and tighten this down and it'll pop it out and if you're worried about destroying the boot a lot of guys once they loosen it they'll hit here with a dead blow and usually it's enough to shake out the ball joint and get it free there's that take out our tool take the nut back off and then we're gonna have to persuade this a little bit but we'll get this toe link off of here all right and we'll put the toe link off to the side there and now we press up on our shock and get it out right through here nicely so that's off all right so this is the upper coil over mount for the rear you're going to see obviously the d for the driver side and there's going to be a p for the passenger side so the way this fits is it goes into there so we will have to make additional clearance for not only this bracket to fit in, but also your bolt with the head and the nut there. So I've already opened it up. You can see I just clearanced it a little bit more with the grinder and I painted it up so we don't have bare metal. And then now that will fit in there perfectly. So um, I would get that done first before you mount your shock and everything to this. So that way you just have this piece free and then you can go ahead and clearance that so that you can fit again the bolts and the nut in there. That way we can easily put it in and make sure all of your bolts align like so. All right, next up, we're assembling our rear coilovers. So this one I've already completed, so you can see what it looks like here. But we're gonna go ahead and do this step by step with you guys. So this is the order of what's gonna be installed. You can follow the instructions here. First, we're gonna install our adjustment collar. You will need to take off this rebound adjuster because by the time you get to here, this will not clear so that you can get it onto that seating area. So we'll go ahead, remove that, and then we can start installing everything. Loosen the torque screw, and then you can lift up and the knob will be removed. We can set it off to the side because we're gonna put it right back on in a minute here. Then we're gonna get our adjustment collar we're going to slide it over everything and then we can start threading it down next up we're going to grab one of these slip collars here our spring then we'll put another one of these washers this collar center everything up and now we can put our c-clip Kind of just have to stretch it over the top here work it around our rebound adjuster and you can do it by hand here slip this c-clip around there we go now we can just take out the excess slack in here now you can go ahead and put back on your rebound knob and then don't forget you're gonna put in your screw. We're just gonna put it in loosely for now. We're not gonna tighten this down just because we're still gonna get our adjustment in place here. Okay, next up, we've got these two sleeves that are gonna slide into here. And then we can go ahead, we can take our mount, slide it over the top, put our bolt through, and our washer, and our nut. 
So we'll go ahead and tighten our hardware. All right, so for now, I just zeroed them out. So what I did was just snugged the spring up, and then uh, I also just made sure they're balanced, but we're gonna have to readjust this stuff once everything gets in the car and we get the car under its own weight, and uh, we can determine from there. So anyways, these are in. I didn't tighten these up, but uh, if you are setting them for good, definitely make sure you snug up your Allen head here. Let's go ahead, install these on the car, and uh, start getting these mounted. All right, so let's get this coil over in here. It's a little bit awkward to uh, kind of feed it through here, but I just did the other side, so kind of got a little familiar with the process, but kind of have to wrestle a few things. So I fed it up through here, and then trying to get it, and then you have to get it on the lower mount. And in order to do that, you kind of have to get it past the rubber. The rubber is kind of fighting us at the same time. All right, but we'll see if we can manage. Oh, I managed to actually squeeze it in there. There we go. So I don't know if you guys saw what I did, but I brought the shock down enough that I could get it over top of this rubber. And then now I might have to clock this a little bit. And I'm gonna put in my lower shock bolt and then I'm gonna use my safety stand and raise this control arm. So we'll grab our 24 mil bolt, toss that in here, get this situated. I'm going to throw the nut just loosely on the back so that we're ready to tighten that down once we get everything in here. Then I'm going to take my safety stand, put it under here, and we're going to raise everything up so that our upper shock mount can meet the frame. Okay, so two upper 13s are tight. Now let's tighten our 24 head lower shock mount. All right, everything's tight. All right, so coil overs are in. I got the hardware tightened. I still gotta tighten some miscellaneous stuff such as the sway bar and whatnot, but I will be actually upgrading to the ride tech sway bars. So um, that's gonna be in another video for you guys. What I did, you guys can mount these wherever you please. I wanna put them inside the vehicle. That way when we're at the track, if I need to make some quick adjustments, I can literally just pop the hatch or pop the hood, make my clicker adjustments and uh, off I go. I don't have to physically get underneath the vehicle. Um, so what I did was I drilled a three inch hole right here again You guys can enter the vehicle wherever you please But uh, reason for the three inch hole is because we have to get this part of the body through I tried with a two and a half inch hole and even though I took the knob off the end which you can remove Still couldn't get it through with a two and a half I could have notched the two and a half like kind of made them you know a keyhole in the two and a half and made it work but as far as uh, you know, getting a grommet and stuff, now I can go ahead and just get a nice three inch grommet and I just I felt like that was a better solution than trying to put a keyhole in it just for the one area. So three inch is the best bet if you're gonna do something similar like this, but I've also seen people you know, mount them in here and stuff like that. So again, wherever you, you know, choose to mount it, you don't have to necessarily drill or make a hole in your vehicle. So anyways, I'm gonna pass those through and then uh, also get my three inch holes situated in the front and then we can start mounting our canisters inside the vehicle. All right, so coilovers are installed. I wanna show you guys some stuff here on the rear. So this is the routing that I went with my cable and then we put a three inch hole right here. I'm still waiting for the grommets to arrive, but uh, that is pretty straightforward. This is where I positioned my rebounds control. So right here, my rebound clicker is right there and I have zero preload on them and I already set it down and I'm really happy with the ride height. So I'm gonna leave it at uh, zero preload. It's not too low, but it's not like stock height, which I think is perfect. It keeps all the suspension in the proper geometry. So everything's good, everything's tight. And that's how everything will look. And you'll notice these screws right here. So I've got four, hopefully you can see them, but those go right through the body. And once it comes into the trunk, this is where it chose to mount it. So my rubber grommet will go there, that'll get centered. And then I've got my remote reservoir mounted securely right here. Adjuster is easily accessible, and I think that looks super clean. I was trying to see if I could mount it in here, but without, you know, I didn't want to stress this hose too much, and this is kind of the natural path it wanted to fall. And then same thing with here, mounted the brackets right there. These brackets are supplied by Ride Tech, and I can easily get to my adjusters. You know, it's just as simple as popping the trunk, getting to this, and it's still, you know, if I ever wanted to use the trunk for anything, it doesn't interfere with any of my trunk space, as you can see. Same thing, grommet will go there, and same sort of deal. So the path goes right through here, 
with our hose. I secured it with a few tie wraps just to kind of keep it where I wanted it to, um, just in case it decides to drift off. Rebound adjusters right there. Everything's secure, everything's good. And uh, I can put my wheels back on and show you guys the ride height. So to make any spring adjustments, we can simply loosen our retaining bolt. So there is this Allen head bolt right here that you have to loosen. That's what keeps this collar from rotating. Some companies will use two of these adjusting locking collars, but honestly having one here and just having the Allen head bolt, I think is a little bit simpler format to use and uh, we're good there. So we'll go ahead, put these wheels on. I'll show you guys the front setup as well. All right, and here we are on the front of the vehicle. It's gonna be a mirror image of both sides, but I wanted to show you guys what we did. So here is our front coilover. It's installed. We reinstalled our adjustment. The way the Corvettes are, at least the C5s, the coolant reservoir is right over top of it. So in order to get to our rebound adjuster, we do have to um, just loosen these two 10 mils here. And then there's one more on the air side. If you choose to have that one in place, lift this up and you can get your rebound. So it's only a couple 10 mils away, but um, that's where that is. And then this is where I routed our line. I actually chose to go on the inside of the A-arm. They luckily gave us enough slack and length in this line. There was a little tab here that I used a, just loosely put a tie wrap there to kind of keep things tucked away. Same thing here, there's also a little hole or tab here on the upper control arm and I just loosely put that there. That way, as our suspension articulates, everything is staying out of harm's way because you gotta remember, we're gonna have our front wheel here and we're running oversized tires in the front. We're gonna have a square setup with uh, 315s on all four corners so we want to make sure this isn't going to get into anything as we're turning and going around corners and all that kind of stuff so this keeps everything secure out of the way i put it on the back there and then there was already a hole right here so i drilled one more hole put another tie wrap right through there and this is tucked right up against our frame rail out of harm's way and then another three inch hole right through here and then where I mounted the reservoir was right behind the headlight here. I spent a bunch of time trying to figure out where I wanted to put this reservoir on both sides. I did a mirror image on both sides, so the three inch holes there. Again, still waiting for the grommets and the, the grommet will go in there. But um, there is not much room underneath the hood of these cars in the front. So, you know, even if you wanted to mount it over here, I've seen some guys mount them on their radiator support, but with me having the Pro Charger kit, I also don't have much room here either. So, because normally people would just have a intake arm going straight down there and they would have a bunch of space here and there. But uh, I didn't really have that. So this is where I chose to. I've seen some other people online also mount them behind the headlight. So I've got them there. I can easily adjust my low speed and high speed compression and uh, everything's secured, everything's fastened and we're good to go. And for the people that are paying very close attention, you will notice I don't have the sway bar on right now. We are gonna be putting on our Ride Tech sway bar. So that's why I have the stock one out. And uh, the next video, you'll see me actually installing the sway bar. So it's uh, the car's just rolling around in the shop right now. We're not doing anything with it, but <laughs> the sway bar will be right here as well. And we'll have plenty of clearance around everything for that as well. Okay guys, so here she is on the ground. So I wanna show you guys how it sits. So right now we are going to be getting this thing all outfitted for track events but it does have the stock c5 z06 wheels on it and they're actually an inch smaller in the front so if it looks a little bit deceptive that's because it's a completely different size tire but once i get the square set up on here if you guys subscribe you'll see the full setup here but this is the way that she sits on zero preload so i'm actually really happy with the ride height i'm not trying to go for like the slammed look or anything like that because this car we're just dealing with pure performance but overall super happy with the setup we're going to continue to dial this setup in we still got a bunch of other stuff we still got to get the ride tech sway bars on here as well so i'm gonna wait till we get that stuff on here but for now car's sitting dead level dead even i'm also going to be doing some subsequent setup videos for you guys kind of showing you guys where my settings are once we get more time at the track and getting things Things dialed in i'll keep you guys posted on what settings we're using and what settings we're liking all of that good stuff the one thing that's really nice about this we've got high speed compression low speed compression what does that mean let me explain to you so high speed compression is where you're hitting bigger bumps and dips stuff like that that's when the suspension's taking a big hit that is your adjustment for the compression during those situations the low speed compressions for the smaller stuff all your more insignificant bumps and whatnot, and then your rebound is how fast that shock is going to return. 
So it's pretty cool that we were able to adjust all that. Not only that, we can also play with the preload on the spring. We can also try different spring rates. It's pretty much infinitely adjustable. But if that's all too complex for you guys, like I mentioned earlier in the video, Ridetech does have just an upgraded suspension for you guys. If you guys are just on the street or maybe you're not taking racing that seriously and you just want a better handling car, they got you covered as well. So I'll link them down below where you guys can go check those out from Ridetech. Also go check out the bushing video and the sway bar video. We're also gonna be putting those on this car and just improving the handling all around. So super happy with the setup. Can't wait till we get to the track. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the other videos. We'll catch you guys on the next one.